and sisters good morning good morning good morning good morning to everyone who has already signed in oh praise be to god thank you morning brother blacker ellis morning brother Carr, sister simone good morning and the others who have not were in the background good morning to you this is the prayer of my heart that god will take the stage and use me the vessel because all I want is to see him glorified what a powerful song what a powerful song that Nathaniel BC has given to us father God we want to thank you this morning we thank you for the privilege of waking up we thank you for the gift of life Mighty God, there must be a reason why you wake us up another morning. So whatever the reason is, Lord, grant us discerning eyes, discerning minds, that we will walk into the plans that you have for us, that we will walk into and act, do what you have given us this opportunity to do. Let us wake up, Lord and do this thing we pray holy spirit of god that you will speak through me now to bless the hearts of your people lord as they hear your word that they will run with it and share your word with somebody as we celebrate and give thanks 
for the ultimate sacrifice. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So how is everybody doing this morning? I trust that everyone is in good health. I, 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 I am going to be bold to say I trust that everyone will enjoy good wealth in the name of the Lord. I, 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 I want to say that. May we at some point in our life enjoy good wealth. I don't know how many of you can see clearly what's written on my shirt. But I'm going to read it for you nevertheless. It says, body piercing saved my life. And it quotes in the corner, Isaiah 53 and verse 5. Body piercing saved my life. I thank God for that sacrifice where Jesus' body was pierced, was bruised, was broken for our life. However, this morning, I want to speak to you on the ultimate sacrifice from St. John 3 and verse 16. Yes, I know that everybody knows that, that verse. I'm aware that everybody knows that verse. But guess what? I want us to read it again or listen as I read it. I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. It says, For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and a only begotten Son so that whosoever believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have everlasting life. Under the topic of ultimate sacrifice I want to point out to you that from this verse there were three ultimate sacrifices or three individuals involved in the ultimate sacrifice with Jesus Christ and you say where you get that from pastor stay with me I want to look at Mary's sacrifice. And I want us to go back to the culture and the custom of the time in which Mary lived. Mary and Joseph lived in a time where when one is caught in adultery, the law of the land was that they were to be stoned to death. I want to put it to you that God knew exactly what he was doing when he chose Mary, an unmarried teenager, an unmarried young girl. And if you remember that when news came to Joseph, that Joseph's intention was to put her aside and continue with his life. Under the law, their reputation was almost sacrificed. Joseph was a devout man, was an upstanding man. But God disrupted his life, as it were, to ensure 
that the ultimate sacrifice was brought into the world. Joseph and Mary could have been stoned to death. But God structured things to provide for them a way of escape from what could have been a total different situation. The coming of Jesus into the world was not an easy feat. It was not a walk in the park as we would call it. Because if you read the events surrounding Jesus' con um, conception and eventual birth, that Herod, Herod, in trying to be cunning, wanting to know where Jesus was born, told the Magi's, when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go worship him. When that didn't happen, Herod put in place a law stipulating that every child under the every male child under the age of two years old was to be put to death. But all the plans of the enemy were put to naught because that was not how Jesus was to be sacrificed. He was to be the ultimate sacrifice. Can I say to you, if you are supposed to be great, you cannot sat be satisfied with being good. I feel like saying that again because I think somebody needs to hear it. If you were created to be great, then don't be satisfied being good because greatness is your destiny. Greatness is your lot. So don't be satisfied with just being good or being average. Herod could not sacrifice Christ at two years old because he did not come to be killed he came to be sacrificed. He came to be the ultimate sacrifice. Something else that, that came out to me as I prepared this was the fact that Mary, in her high state of pregnancy, could have lost the baby on the journey to where Jesus was born. Because she was right, she was not traveling by plane. She was not driving on a limousine, in a limousine on, on Highway 2000. She was not driving on a smooth, comfortable road. She was traveling on a donkey. She was traveling on a donkey through a rough road. Now, I don't know. But maybe one of the ladies could explain to me. Because I know, from what I know, is that during that height of pregnancy, any amount of jerking up and roughness that the woman goes through, she runs the risk of losing that child. But Jesus could not die. He could not come out as what we call stillbirth because that was not what God intended. God did not intend. Yes, Sister Herma, purpose could not die. Jesus could not die as stillbirth. Mary could not lose that baby because he came to be the ultimate sacrifice for the sins of of man. So we have looked at Mary and Joseph's sacrifice. What would what could have been? What, what they could have lost the child. The, the baby could have died on the on the road to to, 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 where, to to where the baby was born. But guess what? That was not how the sacrifice was to be made. If he had died like that, there would have been no hope 
for humanity. What an awesome God we serve. I wonder if you what if you see these things when you read the scripture. Wonder how deep you go when you read the scripture. He could not die like that because there would be no hope for humanity. He had to be the ultimate sacrifice. Somebody say amen. Then next we look at God's sacrifice. God's sacrifice. Are you see what you talk about, Brother Tyrone? Stay with me. Let's go back into the verse. Let's go back into the verse. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world. No. Let's, let's, let's dissect this. The world here was a, was a place of sin, lawlessness, name it, that was happening in the world. God could have just written off the world and built a new one. But he so greatly loved and prized the world is hard work. And so, what he did, he must have looked around in the earth and realized that there was no one qualified whose blood was pure enough, whose body and lifestyle matched up and met the standard to die for the world. And so he gave, mighty God, he gave his one and only son, one and only begotten son. God gave Jesus three things I've listed. I'm not saying these are the only three things, but he gave Jesus to be abandoned. Where you get that from, Brother Tyrone? Go back to the word. When Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he prayed what I think is the most intimate prayer ever prayed for mankind. Father, if it, if it is possible, let this cup pass. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. The most intimate, the most powerful prayer to be prayed. I believe that it is. That is it. When he came back, those whom he trusted to have brought with him were fast asleep. They abandoned him in his most needy time with them. He left them and went back. And he came back and found them sleeping again. He gave his son to be abandoned. His disciples abandoned him. When he was arrested, nobody fought for him. But one followed him. Peter followed him. But Peter followed him to deny him. So he, Jesus was given the only begotten son was given by God to be abandoned and denied. He was given by God to be beaten. His back was given to the beaters. And they whipped and lashed him. The catanine was used on him. Three hundred and fifty one lashes in his back. By his stripes we are healed. The third thing, he was given to be killed. Jesus was given. 
to be killed. He had to die. And how he had to die was planned out by God. The, the, he had to become the ultimate sacrifice. But there was a way that it had to be done for it to to, 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 to bring us the deliverance that we require from our life of sin. He had to be nailed to the cross. He had to become the scapegoat for mankind. The sins of the world. He took on the sins of the world and brought it as it were out of the city and brought it to Calvary. Somebody ought to glorify God that Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice for you and I. For he brought our sins upon himself, all this time carrying the cross himself. The same cross that he was to be nailed to, the same cross that he was to die on. Jesus carried the cross all by himself. Except the time when they asked Simon the Cyrene to help him. And as I close, let us look at Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus became, Jesus was, Jesus is, Jesus will always be the ultimate sacrifice for humanity. He became the ultimate sacrifice by taking my sins and your sins and nailed them to the cross. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He took on the sins of this world. He became the ultimate sacrifice through verbal abuse, through physical abuse, through emotional abuse. He still took on the sins of this world and nailed them to the cross. Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice because you, Sister Dorothy, you, Sister Simone, you, Sister Tracy, you, Brother Blacker Hellis, you, Sister Anne Marie, you, Brother Tyrone Barnett, you could not take on this punishment. And so Jesus stepped in. God sent Jesus to be the ultimate sacrifice that when he cried on the cross it is finished he opened the door when he died on the cross and the curtain was torn from top to bottom he took he, he opened the door so that whosoever Let's look at that word quickly before the time runs out. Whosoever, you and I, fall in that category. Whosoever believed in him and trusted him as Savior shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, did the ultimate thing by dying on the cross for the sins of this world. Time don't allow me. To go deeper in this. But I want to say to you this morning. I want to remind you. Who you are. And whose you are. Once you fall into the category. Of whosoever believes. Oh glory to God. I thank God. I thank God this morning that you fall in the category, that I fall in the category of whosoever believes. We are now among those that say, whosoever believed. I believed in him. I have trusted him as Lord and Savior of my life. And because of that, you and I shall not perish, but have 
everlasting life. This comes to us only through the ultimate sacrifice, who is Jesus Christ the Lord. Hallelujah. And that is why we can sing this song and we need to sing this song. We need to, to live this song. We need to open our hearts and say to God, take the stage. Oh, glory to God. I am just a vessel. And nothing more. You could not. We could not be the ultimate sacrifice. Only Jesus Christ could be the ultimate sacrifice. And we thank God. We thank God that He became the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. And that is why I wear the shirt with pride. Body piercing saved my life. For he was pierced for my salvation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We glorify you, mighty God, that you became the ultimate sacrifice, Jesus Christ, so that I can attain the gift of eternal life. May the blessed Holy Spirit continue to have his way in and through me. May the blessed Holy Spirit continue to be glorified in and through us. May we continue to acknowledge the ultimate sacrifice that you made for our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. And I thank God for this word this morning. Mm. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you're done. And when you're done. Mm. Please take your glory. I, I don't know about anybody yet. I am satisfied. Just to see God glorified. Rabba basha tadaba. Ando do boko. Rabba basi todo boko shandadaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Have an awesome day today. And wherever you go, whatever you find yourself doing, always be mindful that Jesus Christ is the ultimate sacrifice. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you, Sister Simone, Sister Dorothy, Sister Tracy, Brother Dove, and all, the, all those who tuned in and got a word from God this morning, Mr. Michelle Lewis. Everybody who tuned in and got a word, Brother Carr, you got a word from the Lord this morning. Go forth now. Go forth now and bless somebody. Sister Carmen, Sister Herma, go forth now and be a blessing. Sister Diane, God bless you. God bless you, everyone. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.